Today I'm looking at the InPeak Power Crank Generation 2 power meter. A new firmware has dropped today, which has completely changed my initial experience with this power meter. It's been a very interesting process in getting to this point with this new firmware today. So I'll split this video into two halves. First, I'll cover what this power meter is about, all the specs, the details, and we'll go through the data. And the second half, I'll cover how we got here and the issues encountered. It's quite a story to tell. First up, there are two variants of this power meter. There is the ready to ride, ready to go power crank ready, where you just jump on their website, select the crank you want, order, and away you go. It comes in a box, install it. It's happy days. Secondly, there is the power crank custom where you have a compatible crank already. You send it into them for factory fitting, calibration, and they return it to you, ready to ride. And for round two of my review of this power meter, I've been riding the ready-made, ready to roll Shimano 6800 version of the power crank. Jumping to the unit specifications here on paper, and it is a single-sided power crank based on the Shimano Altegra 6800 crank set, just the left arm. Frame compatibility, you need 10 millimeters to install this on your frame. I think everyone has about 10 mil clearance and doesn't have any issues with this one. Power source, CR2032 battery. Battery life is 200 hours claimed. Amp plus and Bluetooth smart. The management of the unit is over Bluetooth and does require a pin code. So that's pretty cool. Only this unit and the Shimano power meter have security built in for management of the unit, so nobody can brick these with a half-updated firmware. Power accuracy, plus or minus 2%, max wattage, 2,000 watts, cadence range, 20 to 200. It's accelerometer based, so no magnets are required on the unit. Active temperature compensation, temperature operation range is quite wide, negative five degrees Celsius up to positive 50 degrees Celsius. 12 grams of the crank arm, weight, you won't feel this. Waterproofing IP67 and firmware upgradable via the mobile app. Pricing of this unit does depend on which model that you choose. So between 340 and 540 US for the power crank ready versions and the custom versions where you send in your crank arm will cost you 360 US plus or minus shipping. Uh, warranty, two years in the EU and other countries. Do check this before purchasing internationally. In comparison to other single Shimano left cranks based on the R8000 models, you have the stages at the top, Pioneer, Four Eyes. In peak comes in in the mid range, I guess you call it price wise at around 473 US. And you have the Magine Ridge right down there at 269. So the InPeak kind of sits in the mid range of the pricing. The unboxing, the installation, and the firmware update check is all very straightforward. It's a left only Shimano crank, which can be installed with minimal tools. And from there, it was straight into the Llama Lab for some Llama Lab testing, and then out onto the road to see how it performed in the real world conditions. Okay, here we are again on my favorite website on the internet, DC Drive Makers Analysis Tool, where we can compare multiple power meters as an overlay and see how they stack up. Today, for this Llama Lab test, it was the ASIO Maduos, the InPeak with the latest firmware, and the Tax Neo. All looking pretty good. Let's dive in a little closer and see what happens here. So there was a couple of little dropouts there from the 1030, which were resolved with a uh, factory reset of the unit. So I'm gonna skip that little part there. Looking at these numbers here, 198, 200, 197, all within three watts there at 200 watts. That's looking pretty good. Remembering, this is only left only. So the number's looking pretty good from left only. I must be pretty balanced on the pedals. Into the 250 watt steady state section here, diving in there. It's jagged because it's unsmooth, but that's looking pretty good. 249, 248, 249. That's two thumbs up from me. Into the sprints. Not too bad. Remembering again, it's left only, so it's gonna take the left number and double it. And the Asioma is a left plus right equals total, and the Neo is total power. So it's all looking pretty good. Peak power there, 1082, 1055, 1077. Okay, I'll pay that. Into the overs and unders. Here, attack to case, sustain release. Uh, that's very common, this pops up quite a bit. Uh, that's looking pretty good, 350, 350. 450 spikes at the start before it stabilizes. Um, okay, I've got I've got to nitpick this a little bit, so I'm going to have to pick this little section just here. So it reads a little low for a few seconds, but if I jump down to the left right side of things, I can see during that section there my left Favero was a little lower, so I was a little imbalanced there. Um, that explains it. So that's also looking pretty good. And then some very light pedaling, just riding along in sim mode there to see if there's anything crazy wonky. No, all looks pretty good. A few short little spikes there, but 
120, 124, 121, looks for a Llama lab test of a left only power meter. I don't think it gets any better than that. That's looking really, really good with the latest firmware. So inside is one thing, outside is another. Let's have a look at two rides from outdoors where I put this thing to the sword. Pulling this up here, Asiama Duo versus the InPeak with the new firmware. Um, visual inspection, all looking pretty good. The overall numbers for a longer ride will always be a little different depending on how it starts and stops with auto pause and how one power meter will continue reporting for a few seconds. So overall, the numbers that could be a little bit different. You're seeing here 202 versus 186. Doesn't tell the true story though. We need to dive into the different sections to have a look at what's going on. So through here, it's a bit of over and under work through here. Uh, visually looks okay. Numbers wise, 290, 285. So about five watts difference there. So I'd assume with 290 versus 285, I was probably a little lower on the left pedal. Tick, done, 142, 147. I was a little lower on the left pedal. So overall on the left, which is what we're seeing there, is a little lower. That explains it, makes complete sense. Um, another little section through here. Again, visually tracks pretty well, as well as you would expect. Uh, 328 versus 328, that's uh, pretty good there. Sprints outdoors. Okay, we've got to find a hole in this somewhere. Sprints outdoors, not too bad. A little bit wonky, but that's what you get with left only. Um, it's, 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 there's no 900 watts difference there. There's no 50 watts difference there. That's looking pretty good. Um, okay, another sprint. Also pretty good. Okay, cool. So happy days there. Llama lab test, ride number one, tick, tick. Ride number two, outdoors, again. Visually, still pretty good. Okay, we'll jump into this section through here. Um, 245 versus 241 or 242, close enough. So a little lower there on the in peak by just a little bit. I'm trying to find holes in this because it's looking so good. So scrolling down to left, right, 121 versus 123-ish or so. So I'm a little lower on the left and yeah, it reads just a little bit lower on the left. So that's as expected. Into the sprint outside. Uh, what have we got here? Um, so within uh, 11, 12 watts at 1,000 watts. Good, happy days, cool, cool. Um, the rest, I'm gonna skip over because it just works. The thing actually works. If we scroll down into the mean max power, you can see there they track pretty well. Uh, later on, after the hour, that's where the start-stop things come into play. So I wasn't pedaling fully for an hour. Um, that all looks pretty good. Um, yeah, happy days. So to wrap up the first half of this video, the Impeak Powercrank Gen 2 with the new firmware passes the Llama lab test and the Llama outside test with flying colors. Those numbers were brilliant indoors. It didn't overshoot in the sprints. And the way it responded exactly to my left being a little low and reading a little low, left reading a little high, left reading a little high. Of course, that's what's gonna happen with a left only where it doubles the power numbers. Doesn't get any better than that. It's one of the best single-sided Shimano crank power meters that I have tested with that firmware version. Now onto part two of this video, how we got here today to this firmware, which completely changed my experience from the initial unit that I had. So if you remember the initial uh, in-peak power meter that I had, it had zero offset issues and I spent 17 minutes plus, I do apologize for the length of that video, diving into all the specs of the unit, the installation and my ride experience, which was quite frustrating. There appeared to be zero offset issues. Every time I'd ride and hit zero offset, it would read differently. Sometimes it would read high, sometimes it would then read low. Sometimes it had moments of brilliance where the numbers matched just like it does now with the new firmware. I couldn't work out what was going on. I took all that data and my user experience and I sent it back to Impeak for review. They come back saying, make sure the zero offset is saying zero on the screen and make sure the pinch bolts are down nice and tight. So probably reinstall the crank and it should be good to go. It kind of wasn't. And yeah, I was pulling up short on the Llama lab test. So that wasn't a very good experience. To their credit, they took all that on board. They took the crank back, I shipped it back to them and they looked really, really deep into what was going on and why I had such a poor user experience. A few weeks later, they reached out saying they'd found a problem, that addressed the problem and would I like to retest? And that's how round two came about. They've sent me another crank with the zero offset problem fixed within that firmware but it doesn't stop there. The rabbit hole got a lot deeper. And this is where things got very interesting and welcome to a rabbit hole. Now, remembering this is just a history lesson of how we got here today where everything is resolved, but I think this is worth covering because of how they got there. So what we were seeing in the past, this is all historical now, so this has all been resolved. We dive in here to the Llama lab test with the newer in-peak power meter. Ignore the dropout there, that was fixed later on with the reset of the 1030, but can you see the trend that's happening there? 
We've got an oscillation happening with the in peak. And I was seeing this on the head unit. Riding along, it would read high, low, high, low, but overall was accurate. I couldn't explain that. It's the very first power meter I've seen do this. There was oscillations. And if you carve all that up, it was happening every 45 seconds. Again, this is where the Lama lab test really comes into its own with those long steady state sections. You can look at things like temperature change and yeah, trends like this happening. Jumping down to the left right power where things are doubled in this firmware, you can see it really oscillating all the way through here. It's up and down, up and down, up and down, but very, very consistently. Whereas the pedals and the Neo were just nice and smooth. So this data set was bundled up along with my user experience and sent back to InPeak for explanation. It was now accurate, but why was it oscillating every 45 seconds? It was truly bizarre. They came back to me asking if I could try on another trainer. And yes, I could because I have a couple of trainers here. Um, could have been the Neo getting in the way. So here is the Kicker Core. And again, Llama lab test and scrolling down, scrolling down. It's still happening there. So oscillations there every 45 seconds but it didn't appear to impact the overall power reading, which was just truly bizarre. After a few emails back and forth with InPeak, uh, the final Llama lab test was done here, just a shortened one, and it was still taking place. Nice clean data set here with the Taxneo, Fevero Asiomas, and the InPeak with the older firmware. And scrolling down here, you could still see that oscillation taking place. So that's the challenge they were faced with in the last six weeks in resolving that. But as a reminder, jumping back to where we are today with today's firmware, it's all resolved. That's all happy day. So that's all pretty good. I just wanted to give people an overview on what was occurring and what they were diagnosing in the last few weeks with this power meter from the data coming from the Llama Lab. After being in IT for years and years, I do love a technical change log for any software updates or firmware updates. InPeak took it to the next level. They did a full report on what's changed and how they went about resolving the issues to get to where they are today with the new firmware. So they've published a document here, I will link below in the video notes and also over on gplama.com to this report if you wanna have a deep dive into what's going on. But they do discuss here, let's scroll down, scroll down, the introduction about the two issues that were found by me in the Llama Lab, the zero offset and the oscillation issues. They dive into here about how they saw the data and how they resolved that. The oscillations with the power frequency every 45 seconds, the data there. More information about that and the drifting gyroscope that was causing the issues and how they went about fixing that. And the data that indicates everything's working fine, as you saw earlier on the video, 1.11 fixes all that. And jumping to the conclusion here, which sums it up nicely. Now remembering these guys are from Poland, so their English is actually, it's probably better than mine. So their conclusion here, taking under consideration issues mentioned in this document, InPeak power crank generation version two power meter in its initial phase was burdened with two significant errors in the firmware. Thanks to the cooperation with Shane Miller, InPeak has diagnosed the cause of the errors described in this document, which have been eliminated by changes in the firmware of the device. In addition, the technological process of production and the assembly of power meters has been streamlined to eliminate the potential errors of human factor. In order to ensure 100% correct operation of power meters without disturbances in the operation, it is recommended to update the InPeak power crank version two power meter to firmware revision 1.11 through the InPeak manager mobile application. The update will be available from the 1st of August 2019, that is today, and the described disturbances do not concern in-peak power crank generation 1 power meters for which the latest stable firmware is revision 0.40. InPeak ensures that it makes every effort to ensure the best possible quality of products and services offered. Yep, can't disagree with that. They've done a super good job of this. It's taken me from a we're pulling the pin on Llama lab test to giving it a thumbs up and producing a product that is a different experience that was only one or two firmware updates away. So well done to InPeak there and I'm pretty happy that uh, the data that I've provided um, has got them a better product on the market. Leading the way there guys, thanks so much for that. All right, thanks for watching this one. Remember, lots more coming up in the lead up to Eurobike. Hit subscribe, give it a thumbs up if you found this interesting and informative and happy days. All right, thanks for watching.